Hiya, my name's Charlie and welcome to my channel and welcome to my weekly reads. I hope you guys are well and um, have a good old nutter with me in the comments below and all of that stuff. Before I get into what I've been reading and then all the nutty stuff, um, I've just got a little reminder about Secret September. Um, in case you guys haven't seen already, uh, myself and Charlie are hosting a read along for The Secrets of Hartwood Hall in September, throughout September. So you still have till Wednesday the 31st of August to sign up for it. I will leave a link to the um, Google Doc in the description plus like places to buy the book. Katie's book is still again as a reminder only 99p on Kindle till the end of the month so you've still got time to pick up the book and yeah, if you don't like want to get the ebook you can get the audiobook I'll put a link to that and then or a physical book I'll all the links in the description. So yeah that's that. Now I'm going to talk to you about all the books that I have finished since the last time I spoke to you and I will, what I'll do is I will talk you through the non-bookery one first and then the booker ones and I'll do my usual ranking the booker after etc. So usual format, not, not much changes here. Um, <laughs> so I finished the collection I was speaking to you about last week which is um, Quakey and Mezzi's Content Warning Everything. This is brilliant as I know it would be. Um, again, this will just be one that I return to and reread and probably at various points um, dip in and out of again, which is what I would do with poetry collections. Actually, I need to move my poetry downstairs. So I don't, I might make that easier to be to just when I want to pick it up because that's a whole other side note. Um, right, so then, um, I think, so I was actually messaging um, the lovely Charlotte, Charlotte Malloy, and um, she was asking me which which books, women in translation books, um, I had read so far in August. And actually, I said to her, well, I haven't read any at this point when I was messaging her last week. And so I'd finished, obviously, I finished this physical book. And so I was like, well, I need to pick something else up. And actually, on my shelves, then I headed, I decided to treat myself and head to a wit book, one that I recently picked up um, in when I was went to my London bookshop crawl thing. I'll link that video in the description. Um, yeah, and this is um, what you are looking for is in the library by Mishiko Ayoama. And it's also translated by us and what I forgot to mention that the translators on the cover, which is obviously what the translator should always be on the front cover. Side note. Um, so yeah, this is like a little kind of it's sort of like interconnected short stories, kind of like before the coffee gets cold kind of situation, if you know what I mean, in that way. So what what, so what happens is that um, there's uh, various characters throughout this book and they go to the library and there's a special librarian that then recommends them a load of books, some of which they've asked for and one of which they haven't. And that book will always sort of have this like magical meaning and sort of like somehow influence in their life and it's yeah this was very cozy very good it was a wonderful read there was um the only my only small gripe with it was there was one character that referred to the librarian in a, in a somewhat fat phobic fashion I felt but that's just a smite a small minor niggle because it didn't like happen throughout the entirety of the book or anything so just be aware of that um but yeah this, I love this cover so much. I feel like this is another one of the covers that I would like want a print of. <laughs> so many of those books around at the moment. Um, so yeah, that was that one. And then after that, I was still feeling in a women translation kind of mood. So I messaged my lovely friend Charlie because me and Charlie had planned to read this because we um, both of us loved. This is um, My Soul Twin by Nina Haratashvili, translated again by Charlotte Collins. And again, the translator is on the cover. It's again very good. And um, yeah, I've read and loved the eighth life as did my friend charlie and so we've we went we both picked these books up similar times um last year and vowed to buddy read it which is so basically i said mrs charlie being like oh gonna start reading it and charlie picked it up as well so yeah um this is a book about we follow the lead character of stella and when she's younger she's sort of going out on like a day going out with her father for like a day trip kind of thing it seemingly and when he sort of goes off somehow and she's in a house and she meets a boy called Ivo and it's um turns out their parents are sort of having this little affair and but also then 
sort of influences these two characters for the rest of their life it impacts that sort of affair then impacts them and it sort of uh, leads them to have this like entanglement with each other and it's sort of this obsession with each other and um it's more than just a relationship because they end up actually kind of being like almost kind of like siblings even though not siblings because they're not related but you have to read the book to sort of see at the beginning of the book we see Stella and that Ivor and her are reunited after having many years apart and she but, uh, but Stella is in, is married um, and with a child and so it's sort of again it's sort of putting her in this uncomfortable position but also it's a the the desire is obviously still there and it's sort of talking about really sort of like um it's talk, it this book sort of talks about um, Stella's agency because I feel like in her life Stella feels like she's lost a lot of that lost a lot of control in her life and um part of what she craves with Ivo is a sense of control it's really weird but yeah not really weird kind of unlikable characters in some fashion I just again I flew through this I literally didn't want to put it down I love this book it isn't, like I said, the characters aren't always likeable. This is completely different from The Eighth Life. So if you read The Eighth Life and you wanted something similar, this is nothing like The Eighth Life. Well, not nothing, because the characters are very um, well built um, and the family structure is very well made, I would say. But yeah, I, I thought this was a really, really good book. Not quite, I didn't, it's not quite, it didn't quite hit the highs of The Eighth Life. And something happens at the end of the book that annoyed me um again this happens with me sometimes but um yeah overall yeah really pleased that I read it that's that one um then I'll get on to the book of books that I have finished since the last time I spoke to you so when I was in the library Monday um this I had a request that had come back so um for study for obedience this had come in um by Sarah Bernstein this is the one that I was calling the dead bird book because obviously it has a dead bird on the cover. And so if you would have seen me, like me react to, based upon the premises of the, my initial first impressions of these books, this would be one that I ranked, um, this was sort of bottom of the pack for me because I was just thinking it's just gonna be this sort of unlikable character, um, very plotless, all of which I would say is true. But um, yeah, um, me and Charlie this week filmed First Line Battle, which again, I'll link in the description. And the first line of this, I was like, oh, this actually sounds really good. So that day, I then, was it that day or the next day, very, very soon after, um, I wanted to pick this up. It made me want to pick it up. And I started it, it was literally yeah, yesterday, literally, I literally read it over the course of a morning. I mean, granted, I mean, I've got quite big hands. I'm a tall person and also I have more fans but um, <laughs> um the, the book is just very very small and um it's only 185 pages so it's physically small if you look at the oh, that's not a great example but you see it's quite far away from the margins as well so yeah it was very very easy to sort of plow through these pages and again this is a character that doesn't have a lot of agency in her life um she even describes herself as insipid and not a main character of her own story. Um, so on paper, this should be one that I did not like, but yeah, I just couldn't stop reading it. And I just thought it was just superbly done. And I really am excited to buy um, Sarah Bernstein's writing. Um, it's sort of like set in the countryside as well. So a lot of those elements were described, I thought really well. Um, and there's like a village, there's like sort of, a village that's nearby to um, her and her brother, the lead character's brother, the character is an unnamed character. Um, and it's sort of, that again, they're very othered, I would say. Um, yeah, it's just really, really very cleverly done. There's so many things in here. I was like, oh, this is really good. So yeah, you'll see in a minute where I rank this, but yeah. Nice surprise. It's always good when books surprise you. That's what Trespasses did for me um, with the um, Women's Prize. So I guess this is my equivalent of trespasses for um on this list so um or so far so yeah that's that um also in terms of currently reading with the booker i've also picked up um, i went into town yesterday with the kids and um they basically went off shopping and didn't want me to come with them so um i then 
obviously was walking near Waterstones and this book was calling for me. It did have a three pound off sticker on it, but I have taken that sticker off. I do not like stickers on the books. Um, and yeah, I just picked this up and then went into a cafe because I had a 10 pound voucher as well. So I only got, this was like three pounds, this book. Um, yeah, and I've read one chapter and the, oh my days, the first chapter of this book, this is so amazing. So this is um, set, so Prophet Song is um, set in Ireland. Um, I'm not sure exactly what time period, it's sort of a dystopic sort of time, obviously. Um, and it's um, oppressive sort of police state kind of thing. So at the beginning of the book, we meet Eilish and uh, um, the, knocking on her door are the GNSB, which are an organisation sort of, I think they're sort of like an organisation within the police, a sort of a secret extra part of the police. And they're um, investigating her husband and obviously her husband's not up there at, the, at that time. So yeah, it's, I think it's, it give, really gives me 1984 vibes. It like through the whole chapter, I felt like I was like holding my breath. The tension was just so well drawn. And um, again, the family, um, it was her, um, in the, during the first chapter, her husband comes home and it, he's talking to her and you can just see the love with it within the, within those pages. And they were talking about how they first met to their children, which was very, very sweet. And yeah, this, I feel like this has five star potential to me. It's got it's got that five star feeling. So um, I'm really, really, I really hopeful for this. Again, I'll show you where I rank it in a minute, but yeah. So that is that. So what I will do is before I tell you the books that I've received this week, etc., I'm going to go on now to rank it, giving you my weekly rankings of the booker um, update. I will include the ones I've tried. Um, so Prophet Song will be included in it and also um, All the Little Bird Hearts even though I haven't finished those books yet. So um, yeah, so I will get on to that now. So what I, um, in at number eight will be no surprise to you guys, it's Pearl. In at number seven is In Ascension by Martin McGuinness. Then in at number six is Old God's Time by Sebastian Barry. I really think the writing in this is gorgeous. But the subject matter um, at some points is just so brutal. Um, I'm ranking these in terms of which books I'd sort of want to go back to, which books I want to reread, um, that sort of factor as well, that comes into play. And because of the brutality in that book, that's why I'm placing it at number six. It is really, really good, but yeah, you see. Um, then in at number five is If I Survive You by Jonathan Escoffrey. Um, in at number four is All the Little Bird Hearts. I'm about 50% into this book and I am, I do think it's a really strong book, but there are just other books that have sort of currently overtaking it. Maybe when I have dedicate some time to finish the last 50% this weekend, um, it might rise. So we will see. But yeah, that's currently where it's, it's sitting. Um, in at number three, I've got <laughs> Profit Song by Paul Lynch. Then in at number two, shockingly, is... Um, Study for Obedience by Sarah Bernstein. Oh, I just bloom and love this book. And in at number one is still The House of Doors by Tan Tuan Eng. So yeah, I wonder if this will knock um, The House of Doors off at the top spot by the time I finished it, or possibly Little Bird Hearts might do that. We, we shall see. So yeah, let me know um, what your booker rankings are. Myself and the lovely Gem and Alice, whose channels obviously I'll link in the description, um, this week did a lovely catch up um, for the plod along. So I'll link that video in the description. And so we, yeah, we were talking about the booker. So if you want to go watch that, if you want more like booker chats, um, not just from myself, but obviously including Alice and um, Gem's thoughts, along with some pizza uh, revelation, revelations, yeah, um, check that um, video out in the description. That was so much fun that we had so much fun. So thank you everyone that came to that. Right, um, next I'm going to show you some of the books that I've picked up. Obviously you've seen I picked up Prophet Song um, from Waterstones, but I've also, again from the library, picked up The Bee Sting by Paul Murray. I think I've got a plan for this, but the plan I've got is that I'm going to audiobook and also read it physically. Um, I just feel like it will help me absorb it better. And it'll be easier, like, on certain passages, again, to go back to and refer to, especially if something's so big, to help it go in my brain a little bit more, hopefully. And that's the plan. 
Also, my lovely friend Charlotte from Books and Bargains passed on her copy of A Girlhood by Carol Carolyn Hayes, and she sent me this lovely little card as well, which is very, very gorgeous. So yeah, um, thank you so much again, Charlotte, for that. Um, in terms of stuff that has happened this week, obviously um, the biggest thing today is that, my, uh, that myself and my eldest child went to collect their results for their GCSEs, which was very, very exciting. Oscar let me, um, my eldest is Oscar, Oscar let me um, stand with them when they were opening their results, which I was very lucky for, because not all the parents did, well, not all the parents did, were with their children. And so yeah, um, I was just so, like, regardless of what the results would have been, I would have been extremely proud because Oscar worked extremely hard for um, the GCSEs. But yeah, I was very, 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 very proud of when we saw their results. So yeah, they smashed it. Um, so yeah, and um, that was very exciting. And <laughs> partly the reason, like, um, there's been so much excitement. I feel like that's why I'm slightly, <laughs> I'm so, so tired now because we've had all the excitement this morning and now we're just like, oh, yeah, we're quite tired. Um, so yeah, we'll be celebrating all that um, this weekend and stuff. It's very exciting. Um, my brain is a little bit frazzled, um, as you can imagine, um, from all the, the events and stuff. So yeah, um, I don't know what else I've got to say to you guys. I'm sure there are things I'm forgetting. Um, but yeah, uh, take care. Um, next, let, let me, I know what I was going to say. Let me know um, what you're currently reading, which books you're currently reading. Next week, expect to see the behind the booktube tag. I was tagged by the lovely Shelley from Shelley, Shelley Spurrington. Um, to do that and that's so I'm going to film that in a minute <laughs> and then you can watch that next week probably Wednesday or Thursday next week um, but yeah so um, I think that's pretty much it so yeah let me know what you're reading let me know what you're watching um, all of that good stuff you know I love having a good natter let me know your opinions of any of the books that I've picked up um, yeah take care and sending you guys lots of love